Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Heimvision HD DVR cameras for your home or business. So Heimvision reached out to me and asked if I'd like to do a review of their HD DVR camera kit. So what you see in front of us is a four channel camera kit with a DVR. Um, so we've got four cameras and the DVR kit as well. These cameras feature motion detection, infrared night vision. They are IP66 waterproof. Uh, you can get email alerts from the DVR. You can also get video loss alerts if you lose signal. You can get remote viewing via iPhone or Android. You can also get alerts if the camera becomes blocked. Let's just take a look at the box here, what we've got included. We've got the digital video recorder, four cameras, two power adapters, a power cable splitter, four 60 foot two in one video slash power cables, a USB mouse, um, a handful of screws for the hard disk and screws for the cameras, and then a quick start guide. And this is just a little diagram of how they work. You've got your four cameras that are hardwired to the DVR, and then the DVR can be hooked up to a screen and then also to your internet so that you can upload and watch via the app or their client on the computer. So here are the links to download those two apps in Android, Google Play, and the iPhone App Store. So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. First thing we have here is the DVR. Nice little bubble wrap. Next box has a bunch of cables inside. We've got a power cable looks like here. Uh, this looks like the power splitter cable for the cameras. This looks like a little USB mouse and also uh, the LAN cable as well as some screws. I believe these are for the hard drive that you need to buy separately. Note that the hard drive does not come with this to record video. So you will need to buy one separately. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have another box inside here that has all of the other stuff. So these look like the big, long 60 foot cables. And there's two different ports on these. This looks like the power port. And this looks like the video port. The video will transmit over this yellow cable and then power will transmit over the red cable. So you've got four of these, they're all 60 foot long. And then this is another power adapter. Then one more box in the box. These are probably the cameras, and they are. So there's a package of mounting screws in there, and then the camera itself. So these look like they're adjustable with how you can bend them and mount them. Those are the cables for video and power. There's the mounting bracket and the camera itself. We've got four of those. So that's basically the full contents of the box. I'm gonna move some things aside, and then we're gonna look at the DVR here. So inside this package is the DVR. So we're gonna open this up and also the quick start kit. So this is the DVR, it's a pretty simple unit. Um, it's very light and it's got a couple of LED indicators on the front here it looks like. This is a place where you can write down your password for your unit, a couple screws on the sides to open it up to add the hard drive. And then on the back is all the ports that you were gonna hook up. There's actually eight ports on this. Even though this kit only comes with four cameras, you can add four more on if you like later on. Then we've got audio out, also a VGA out. There's also HDMI out, so you can hook it up to like a regular TV. We've got some more audio ports here, and then also the LAN port, a couple USB ports. And then these are some RS-485, this is the power port. I'm not sure what this RS-485 is. I guess I have to read the directions. But like I said, this does not come with a hard drive. I'm gonna be getting a SSD to install on this to record video. Obviously, you're gonna have to find a central location in your home that allows you to keep this so that, you know, you have 60 feet of cable times four. You have to make sure that you have enough reach for each camera. So in my house, there is a closet that is kind of like the central location that all my networking stuff comes in. I'm gonna use that and running all of my cables through the attic down to the soffit where I'm gonna be mounting all of my cameras. And I'll go into that a little bit later. So I'm gonna open this up real quick and look at where we mount the hard drive inside this unit. I'm using a Samsung one terabyte solid state drive so that my DVR system can record video. You can still use this without a hard drive. It will just only display live video through the DVR. So I highly recommend getting some sort of storage device. There are four screws that hold the cover onto the DVR. They're Phillips screws, remove those and remove the cover. The SSD that I had had smaller screws than what are provided. So I just used double sided tape to adhere it to the inside of the case. There's a standard SATA power plug and a SATA data plug. Just hook those up to your hard drive and you're good to go. Then you can close up the cover, reinstall the four screws, and you're all done. Here is the user manual. First page says they regularly update the user manual, so there's a link there that you can go on to find that. Here's all the table of contents. They talk about how to install the hard drive, 
in the unit by taking it apart and installing it just like that. Then they talk about system connections. So, you know, you got your power connection. This is hooking up to a monitor, hooking up to your internet connection, then hooking up the cameras and hooking the cameras up to the DVR and how to hook the cameras up to power. Then they start talking about the user interface with the DVR, the different functions of watching the video playback. We'll go through this later in the video after we get the install all completed. Got some QR codes there as well. So here's the bracket that I'm gonna be using to attach these to my house. So all around my house, I have a 15 inch soffit that has two metal, um, I guess you call them just brackets on either side. And then in the middle there is vinyl perforated uh, soffit material. So this will just be able to go up into the soffit and I can slightly rotate it and then turn it into place. And then I may attach it with a couple of screws on either end just up into the metal brackets. I just used uh, two screws to attach this and I didn't use the screws that they included. Um, I found out real quick. They didn't last very long. I attached these with just two screws. It's pretty solid. I test fitted it already. If you wanted, you could get a wider piece of aluminum to span this whole way, but then you could have your cable sticking out and then going up through the soffit separately, or you can bring the cable up through the middle. This is just real thin aluminum that I got at my local hardware store. And I think I'll paint the exposed aluminum to match my soffit. I have some soffit paint and it'll blend right in. So here's my first test fit of the camera bracket into my soffit. You can see each side of the soffit has two L-shaped angles where I can slide the camera bracket into and it will just span the opening and the camera will sit up there nice and easy. Once I get the system up and running, you can make final adjustments to the angle and the pitch and the tilt of the cameras. And then for my cables. I'm going to drill a hole through this soffit material. I've already got my cables run and they're just laying up there. I will have the cables go right up through the top. You won't even see the cables. It'll just look like the camera's sitting up there. And like I said, I think I'm going to attach a screw here and a screw here to keep this from moving and to keep it from wanting to rock if there's heavy winds or something like that. That way it's a nice solid attachment and I will be painting these to, to match or at least get pretty close. And here's my final product. I got a screw on either side holding that aluminum piece in, the cable goes straight up underneath into the soffit. Same here, pretty clean installation. I've got two more locations I need to do this. So I'm up in my attic where I ran all of my cables for the cameras to each corner of the house. There's two wires right there leading over to right above my networking room. And I drilled the hole into the stud above the networking room. There's the other two wires, so there's one going that way and one going off that way. But I drilled a hole through the top plate of the stud and then just passed the wires down. And then down in the networking room, I cut a hole in the drywall so I can reach in and grab the wires. Then I'm just going to use a low voltage pass through to uh, pull those wires out through and mount them to the box. Here's the networking room inside my house in the closet. I built a little shelf inside the closet so that I could mount all the equipment up on top and then I cut a hole in the drywall and used a low voltage grommet to pass all the wires down through. After everything's said and done, all the equipment will be up on top of this shelf. Hooking up the cabling to the DVR is relatively simple. You have this four-way splitter for the power of the cameras. Each power lead from the cameras gets hooked up like so using the red connector on the long wires and then those four power leads will then reduce down into one single power lead and be powered with one DC plug. The yellow plugs get attached to the back side of the DVR and they just attach very simply. So just plug all of the red leads into the four-way splitter and then all the yellow leads will get attached to the back side of the DVR. The yellow plugs have like a twist lock mechanism built into the plug that actually very firmly attaches it to the back of the DVR. Then you'll need to hook up some sort of a monitor to either the VGA or the HDMI port so that you can control the user interface of the DVR. I'm going to be using a small monitor, so I'm going to use the HDMI port. Next, find the power port for the DVR. You can use either one of the 12 volt power plugs that come with the system. They're both identical. Go ahead and plug that one in. The other power adapter gets used in conjunction with the four-way splitter for the camera power. So just plug that into the camera splitter. Then the other end gets plugged into your wall outlet. Then find the included USB mouse and plug it into one of the USB slots on the back side of the DVR. This is how you control the user interface on the DVR system. Lastly, hook up a Ethernet cable from the DVR to your router or your modem. That 
that will allow you to have internet access so that you can access the videos with the app or on your computer. I'd also like to note that the included Ethernet cable did not work. I ended up using my own Cat5e cable. Here is my final installation of all my equipment. I built this little shelf so that all the equipment could sit up on top of this shelf. There's the wires coming out of the wall, the power for the DVR comes down and is plugged into this power strip. Then I needed a, just a little USB extension that I had laying around for the USB mouse. Then I'm also using a small 9 inch screen that I mounted to the wall here so that I can operate the DVR system. So this is the user interface of the DVR that shows all four cameras running in real time. So this is a live feed from the outside of my house. And then with the USB mouse that you see there, I can go into different settings and adjust all sorts of different things inside the system. It's pretty user friendly. Um, there's a lot of settings and you can customize a lot of things inside here. You can really kind of customize it the way you want. There are some settings that for this system are not really relatable. So like this control here, PTZ control. These cameras are not PTZ. They're not point tilt zoom. They're just standard cameras that have one direction. It does make me think I can add PTZ cameras on later on if I'd like. Make a username and password when you set it up for the first time. There's tons of different settings in here. You can change the record configurations, playback, and backup settings. Alarm is the motion detection features that are built in to the system. You can mess with those settings. There's basic system functions like setting the date, the time zone, etc., things like that. Network settings for your internet connection. Display settings for the user interface itself. XVI settings is different settings for each camera. So there's those brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, acuteness, things like that, all sorts of different stuff. You can even mirror the camera's views if you like, if you want to change the way they're mir mirrored or flip them over if you mounted it upside down or uh, turn off aliasing like that. Makes the camera a little more blurry. Tons of different settings built in. You can even just by simply double clicking on one of the views, zoom to that view and then go back using the right click function and go to a different side of your house from a different camera. I've got mine all named different in the system. Or you can just go back to the view four and it brings all four cameras up. So to do playback, you go into the menu here, click playback, and I've been recording video since the 23rd. So I got, you know, four and a half days of footage saved on this unit. Go ahead and pick one of the days. We'll do, we'll do Saturday. And then you can look at all the footage from those days and it will just, it'll allow you to pick a time of that day and watch the footage. You can also just watch one camera if you want and go into one single camera and then hit the playback and turn off these other channels and go to a day. So here's the playback from October 25th, a few days ago at 3.40 p.m. Here is the night vision. And it's really, like I said, pretty easy to use. Right now I have a one terabyte hard drive in the system and it's been recording for five days. The capacity left on the drive is 279 gigabytes. Now, once it gets down to zero, it'll just simply start overwriting the footage that's earliest on the disc. So you will lose footage if you don't review it, you know, every so often. But I think for a one terabyte drive is pretty good to get about, you know, five to six days of footage stored on the DVR. So if you do have some sort of incident, you have a couple days to review it and you can pull the footage off and put it on uh, a different type of media for insurance purposes or police reports or things like that. The system is going to auto maintain itself. You can set it for it to self reboot at a certain time of the day, a certain time of the week. So there is motion detection. Like I said, you can turn that feature on. I don't have it turned on because didn't really care for that setting and you can adjust the sensitivity. You can set up video blind, which will give you a notification when the camera has been blocked. So that's in there. There's also the video loss settings that will let you know if video gets lost for some reason. You can add multiple users to have different usernames and passwords and limit their functions inside of the system. So if this is for a business and you want to have some of your managers or supervisors access this, but you don't want them to be able to delete video, you can go in and set up a specific username and password for them and then limit their functions. I just have this little screen in my room that I turn on every so often so that I can review footage and go back and adjust some settings as I like. This was just something I found on Amazon. It's a nine inch screen, does the trick for me, and I can turn it off very simply when I'm not in use. I know this video is getting a little bit long, but I just wanted to end it with a couple of clips from the cameras that I pulled off the DVR system. So here's just a normal daytime shot of the front yard of my house, 
and you know it's pretty clear quality it you know has a good range of view it's not super fisheye like some other types of cameras but it does the trick here's another shot of a low light scenario where the cameras are just about to switch to night vision which they do automatically by sensing the darkness outside so as you can see right there it just switches to night vision and here's another night vision clip of a car driving by the front of my house as you can see pretty clearly you can tell it's a vehicle. You could probably figure out what make and model it was based on this as well. And here's another daytime clip of me walking around the house, waving at all four cameras, just making sure all of them are working and testing their line of sight, making sure they're all working correctly. And lastly, I just want to take a look at the app, which is called XMI. It syncs with your DVR after you set it up, and once it loads, you click the channel that you want, and it opens up a, another screen where you select the film reel. This is where you can select the date of the footage you're looking for, and then you click OK. Then you can scroll through that day on the timeline to find a specific time of that day to record footage from. So once you figure out the time of the playback that you want, you can hit the little camera to record. You can also take a still shot by clicking the camera icon. And once you're done filming whatever you want to film, you're going to hit that button again, and it saves that clip of the video into the app. So then you go back out through the app, click on the mobile storage on the bottom, select recording at the top, and then find the clip of whatever you just recorded. And you can then select that and share it like typical sharing on an iPhone um, and save it to your files. So that's basically it, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot again to Heimvision for providing the products for today's video. Be sure to check out the link in the description to their product on Amazon. And as always, thanks for watching. Love it if you subscribed. Stay tuned for more videos. Later.